Welcome to the Student Pilot Podcast. My name is Simon Callas, a flight school owner. Each week, myself and my guests will be talking all things flight training and beyond to help inspire, motivate and support you on your journey to becoming a private or commercial pilot. Talk about choosing a flying school. Now, there are varying degrees of flying schools out there from your friendly flying clubs, which tend to, you know, depending on how much training they do, a lot of them are more geared up to serve members who already have licenses as a club. Um, and on the opposite end of the spectrum, you have your your commercial based flying schools that offer PPL as well, which from my experience anyway, some of them tend to be a bit more sort of clinical and perhaps you don't feel quite as included. So the ideal scenario is somewhere in the middle, a flying school that has the friendliness of a flying club, but a professional structure of a flying school. So my advice is visit several schools, speak to them and see how you feel, how welcome you may to feel. Were you able to ask lots of questions? Were they able to give you time? Um, Because ultimately learning to fly is hugely, you know, hugely expensive And you want to get a feel for the people you're dealing with, the people you're giving your money to and make sure it's right for you. Um, I've been into lots of different flying schools and I've had, you know, ones where I felt like they weren't taking training seriously. And I felt there's other ones that I've been into that um, on the opposite end of the scale, it was just too clinical. It was just uh, you, you walked in there and you just felt like a number, you know, you didn't feel included in anything. So I think the feel of the place is really, really important because you want to feel at ease. You want to feel that you can ask as many questions as you like and you can just pop in and have a chat. Now, the key to it is finding that place that makes you feel like that, but has a professional structure behind it in order that you get the best quality of training. You know, you don't want to go to a place whereby they've got all part-time instructors so every time you turn up you're getting a different instructor different aeroplanes and and it's not treated very seriously you need to go somewhere that that they actually have a structured training plan for you and an, an environment you know conducive to training so go and visit these places look at their reviews from their students see if you can actually speak to some of their students while you're there and you might not even have to ask. You might just get chatting to somebody in reception. You know, what What do you do? I'm a student. I'm partway through my PPL. What do you think of the place? What are the instructors like? You know, that's that's the key to it is get talking to people. Uh, get some recommendations if you can. And and check out their reviews. You know, if they if they look like they've hardly got any reviews, um, that's not necessarily a bad thing. But if they've got, you know, loads of bad reviews, then you need to listen to that and think, OK, you know, what? why is that? And usually if you read the reviews, there'll be a reoccurring theme, you know, perhaps um, they're always cancelling people's lessons for no apparent reason. Whatever it is, there'll be a recurring theme. So look at the reviews and see in the main, are they good? You know, you're always going to have um, one bad review on a, on a great company, <laughs> you know, um, that's just people. But there needs to be a general trend that all the reviews are good. And when you go there, you're made to feel welcome. You can ask questions. And perhaps when you're speaking to the other members, they're saying good things, you know, making you feel like it's a place you want to be. Um, I'm a big believer that when you're spending this kind of money on something, that you should get lots of advice before you do it. So this is part of the reason why I'm doing this now, to help you. But when you go to your flying school, they should want to give you this advice. You know, if they're, if they're just interested in getting you a trial lesson and as soon as you come off the plane and they're saying, right, let's sign you up to a course, that's not what you want. You know, people who come into our flying school, they come off a trial lesson and they say, look, I want to sign up and I, I refuse them flat. Not because I don't want their business, but because it's quite easy while somebody's excited off the back of a trial flight to sell them something. And that's not what it's about. You want them to sign up to something knowing full well they've got all of the information. So my first point of call when somebody comes up for trial lesson, they're excited, they want to do it, is right, here's a load of information, read through it, see what worked for you, then book an appointment to come back in, have a cup of coffee and sit down and let's spend an hour or so talking through about what your goals are, what you want to achieve from it and how best we can serve you. So 
like I say, when you're going into a flying school looking for one, make sure that they've got that kind of attitude, that they're there to give you advice, not sell you something immediately. They're there to give you the advice so you can make up your own mind as to what works for you. And they're there to steer you um, to, to help you get the best outcome. Yeah, go and visit a few flying schools. There's bound to be several in your locality. Check out the reviews, speak to the members, you know, speak to the instructors, get a feel for the place. And if it doesn't feel right, it probably isn't. Um, but you're going to be spending a lot of money with this flying school, so make sure it's right for you. So one of the other considerations when you're looking at a school is what their facility offers in terms of aircraft, flight instructors, their general availability. So you need to have a, an idea of how frequently you could book a lesson with them. And what do they offer in terms of ground instruction? You know, ground instruction is really important these days with these uh, e-exams. So a lot of people are opting for ground instruction. If you don't have ground instruction facilities at the school you're going to, then perhaps you need to be looking at going elsewhere to do that. And that might be you know, some level of inconvenience and, and perhaps additional cost as well. Theory exams. Now, you need to be able to take your theory exams easily. Do they have in-house facility for you to do that? Or again, do you need to look um, somewhere else? Do they have any online training resources you can use uh, to accelerate your progress and help you? Um, medicals as well. Do they have in-house uh, medical facilities? Uh, we're lucky enough that we do have an AME on, on site actually several times a week. So you can actually get your medicals done with us. Not everybody does offer that. Um, so yeah, a lot of schools don't offer in-house solutions so that means that you do need to factor in some additional time to travel to other locations and perhaps additional costs associated with going to other places for these services so look at it as a package you know what what can they offer you and, and do they offer you the right structure in order to be able to do it easily the other thing i think is really important when you're choosing your flying school is its location so it needs to be within a reasonable commute for you. Now, people do tend to travel um, for flight training, but think about, you know, getting stuck in traffic and coming from work. You know, if, if you're having to do like an hour commute each way to your flying school, is that really feasible and sustainable going forward? There's going to be around about 40% of your lessons cancelled due to weather. OK, that's a that's an accurate figure. I've actually just done... Um, some uh, research from our, um, our online systems on that and and that's about the figure we get weather cancellation so you're going to get that in the main for, for most schools depending on, on the location so you know is is it feasible that if your school's an hour away that you could be like 50 minutes into your journey and maybe you're notified of a cancellation is is that going to be sustainable going forward so try try and get one that's local to you I mean, obviously if you're happy to travel distance for the right school, that's different. You know, some people do travel a long way to come and fly with us here. Um, we do have residential students as well. But if you're commuting to your flying school, do make sure it's within a reasonable commute that you can you can put up with for the, the time of your training because that, that could grate on you after a while. Now, another consideration is the aircraft. Now, to, to be honest, that's the least consideration, in my opinion, out of anything because an aircraft is an aircraft. When you're learning to fly, um, the type of aircraft really makes no difference whether it's a PA-28, a 152, 172, a Grob, whatever it is. Um, you are not, as an, you know, an inexperienced pilot going to know any difference between the aircraft you're flying whatsoever um, other than it looks different, in my opinion. Um, you know, there are benefits to flying certain types of aircraft um, in the, you know, some of them, if you've got a high wing, for example, you've got better visibility down below. If you've got a low wing, you've got better visibility above. Um, but, you know, they're, they're just silly things. You know, they're not they're not really you know you're not going to see any benefit from flying any other type of aircraft other than perhaps the cost okay so always make sure that you can afford to fly the type of aircraft that you're flying because they do vary in price but the actual physical aircraft itself it takes some experience when you're flying to be able to kind of notice the, the differences between how they handle when you're you know very early on in your training you're just not going to know any difference so you know we get some people that come to us and they're really hung up about flying 
I don't know, a PA-28, for example. I've got to fly a PA-28. Why? Why have you got to fly a PA-28? Or why have you got to fly a 172? You haven't. It's just a tool. Okay, think of it as a tool. The main thing is making sure that it fits for you um, comfortably, as in you feel comfortable in it, and it fits for your budget. Whether the wings are up high or wings are down low has absolutely no effect on your decision making or shouldn't do anyway. Choosing a flight instructor. Now, this is the bit all flight instructors hate me talking about because they're all qualified to deliver this training that you need. Okay, so they've all got that qualification to do it and the ability to teach you what you need to know. Now, one thing I would stress about this from flying with, I think, nine flying instructors I've flown with over the years, um, they're all individuals. Now, although they're all qualified to deliver this material to you, obviously they all have their own personality and that can be a problem in the cockpit. Okay, If you're flying with somebody who perhaps you just feel a little bit uncomfortable with just because of the way they come across, um, the way they speak with you, it can put you on edge. And, and actually it can become a problem whereby you, it makes the flight less enjoyable for you and perhaps even to the point whereby that you're starting to not absorb what they're trying to teach you because of the way it's being conducted. Now, in the, in the main, that's, you know, not something that happens too often, but, you know, individuals are individuals, you know, you can't get on with everybody. Now, when you're talking about spending potentially... 45 hours minimum for a PPL with this person to teach you, your progress is going to be hampered if you are struggling to get along with them, even on a personal level, let alone when they're trying to teach you something. So you need to feel feel comfortable with this person. You need to feel like they fill you with uh, confidence and that they can address issues with your training without um you feeling sort of uh, intimidated by what they're saying um so yeah i think it's really important that you, you get on with this person to some extent now it doesn't have to be you don't have to be best friends with this person obviously um it just means that you have to feel comfortable with them and you have to feel that you can absorb what they're trying to teach you and learn from it and feel that you can ask them any questions that you might need to do without feeling and you're asking a silly question. Now, like I say, I've flown with at least nine flying instructors over the years, and some of those people, I was glad that it was only a few lessons that I had to fly with them whilst my instructor was on holiday or whatever it was, you know, um, or perhaps they were just doing a checkout for currency for me, uh, but I was glad that I only had to fly with them the one or two times I had to. Uh, just because I didn't get on with that person and it made the flight less enjoyable for me. The other thing you need to think about when choosing a flight instructor as well is how available are they? Because some flight instructors may well be employed by the flying school that you work for, but some of them um, are part-time, some of them have uh, jet pilot jobs, You know, some, some of them are employed doing other things. So how available are they? Because I've known instructors that are perhaps only fly uh, once or twice, you know, one, one or two days a week. Now, if you're trying to get your license done quickly, that's not going to be good for you. So there needs to be a balance there as well. You know, depending on what you're, you're trying to achieve, then you need to be thinking about how frequently can I fly with this person? And, you know, you need to look at that because I, I do believe that you will make better progress if you work with a flying instructor that you get on with for a start and also you try and fly with them as often as possible obviously there's going to be times where they're not available so you need to factor in at least one of the backup instructor for the days they're not available if you're wanting to fly really frequently but try and you know if you're going to try and fly frequently try and pick somebody who's going to be available to fit your plan there's no point in saying right i really like flying with joe but He's, he's only available on Sundays and I can't fly on Sundays. You know, obviously that's not going to work. So pick an instructor that's going to work with your timetable. And then, you know, if worst case, you don't get on with them. They're professionals. If you turn around to them and say, look, I'm really sorry, it's not working out. Can I fly with another instructor? You know, if they're a professional, which they, they all are, um, they're not going to take that personally. They will just take it on the chin 
and think, okay, we just didn't get on and, and hopefully somebody else will be able to uh, deliver what you need. Okay, so never be afraid to ask for a new flight instructor if you're not getting on with the one you've got. But I would certainly factor in getting at least one standby instructor so that you've got backup for when, for when your instructor goes on holiday. And then, like I say, if for whatever reason you're not getting on with that person, then, then change instructors. But ideally, you know, continuity is the best thing. Get a good primary flight instructor that you enjoy flying with who's available when you need them to be. And then a secondary one as a backup instructor for the days that they're not. And by doing that, you'll get the best progress. So if you're flying consistently with one or two instructors, they're going to know where you're at and uh, they're going to have a handle on what to do for your next lesson. And, you know, perhaps even that your your last lesson notes weren't a good reflection on you. You know, everyone has a bad lesson. So if your instructor's last note said, oh, you know, Dave didn't have a particularly good lesson, his landings were flat, um, needs improvement. It might be that the previous lessons you were actually quite good and you just had an off day. Now, your main instructor would know that, but somebody new that's flying with you, um, it's not going to have a complete handle on where you are. So bear that in mind. You want to find somebody who's available when you are, that you can fly with regularly and then have one backup person at least for, for when that person um, is unavailable. So I think the key takeaways really um, from this session is make sure that the flying schools you're looking at are within a reasonable commuting distance or perhaps they've got some sort of accommodation as a backup if you need it. Make sure it feels right when you go there. The people are friendly. You can ask as many questions as you want. You feel confident in what they're going to deliver for you. And, um, you know, just generally you get a good vibe about the place. Uh, make sure that you ask lots of questions and they've got time to, to answer those questions. Even if you do have to book in for a, a visit or something so they've got that time, make sure that they're willing to give you enough time to discuss it with you and get a trial lesson with them. So you can try out their instructors and make sure that you get a good feel about it. Um, check out the facilities. Obviously, you need to know about the ground school facilities, all of the things we spoke about and make sure that they've got um, regular availability for aircraft instructors to deliver the course and the time frame that you're looking for. And ask them how many employed instructors they have versus uh, self-employed. Obviously, if you have self-employed instructors, they're going to have commitments elsewhere. Um, and check out the reviews. That's really important. Check out the reviews, speak with other students and see um, see what people are saying about them. And the key thing really as well, if you do end up with this school, make sure that you have a written training plan, okay? Um, you know, that's really, really important. So ask them if you can have a written training plan. If you like this episode, please like, subscribe, and ding the bell to receive notifications of the next episode.